Good morning, and welcome to the United Methodist Church of Sun City Center, Florida. I'm Keith Rasmussen, the Associate Director of Music and Organist, preparing for our weekly Mini Organ Plus recital. Um, it's organ playing plus narration, and we'll have some other artists involved at some point, too. Um, before we get into the organ music, I'm asking my good friend and colleague, Kevin, to come and do the concert invitations today. Kevin. Thank you, Keith. Here are some upcoming concerts that you may be interested in attending. On Friday night, October 16th at 7 o'clock, we'll host an amazingly talented pianist by the name of Bobby Van Dusen. He has performed with the likes of Al Hurt and Pete Fountain, and he's also the current title owner of the World Championship Old Time Piano Playing Contest in the Senior Division. And this is an annual competition that's been held since at least 1975 in Mississippi. We will request a $10 donation at the door that night for that concert. We did have a Keith Rasmussen organ concert scheduled for Sunday, October 18th, but we have canceled that. Since he's presenting these wonderful Wednesday mini concerts, we just thought it would be better to reschedule a full-scale concert at a later date. And then to wrap up October, on Friday, October 23rd, we will have a very good doo-wop group by the name of Chicago Heat singing your favorites from the 50s and the 60s. You can come support the local South Shore Kiwanis chapter raise money for scholarships for local high school seniors as you're taken back to a simpler time when music was beautiful and harmonic. Tickets are on sale in the church office for $10. If there are any available the night of the concert, they will be $15. And that will wrap up the October concert schedule. We will be observing CDC recommended safety measures at all of these concerts, so please bring your masks, and there will be appropriate social distance measures taken, and limited seating based on our church capacity, the normal capacity being 700. So we do ask that you plan to arrive early since we will be limiting the seating. If you have any questions about any of these concerts, feel free to call me. My name is Kevin Goodno, and my phone number is area code 813-362-0956. Thank you. And now back to the concert. Keith? Thank you, Kevin. Our first piece today is the Curie from, um, by Louis Vierne. This is from his Mass in C-sharp minor. Vierne, Louis Vierne, was born in 1870 and died in 1937. He's the only organist I know of that actually died at the organ console during a, at the very end of a concert. He, he wanted to go that way, and he did. He was the organist at Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris, which, as you know, was recently burned and he worked there from 1900 to 1937. While he was there, he took a concert tour of the United States to raise money to rebuild the organ because it had fallen into disrepair. He was a traditional blind organist. He had glaucoma. He spent a lot of time and money trying to retain his sight, and I've seen pictures of him editing manuscripts that were very, very large print. He was a concert organist, a teacher, and composer. He wrote six organ symphonies. I'll be playing parts of them in, in time to come for you. He had a very unique chromatic style, non-liturgical in a sense. This solemn mass, the first movement, the Kyrie, is written for choir and two organs. Two organs, you say, we can't even afford one. I digress. In the cathedrals, the large churches at that time, they would have the large organ in the back balcony, which had the power and the majesty and accompanied the mass. Then in the front with the choir, there was what they called the choir organ, a much smaller instrument that would support the choir in their singing of liturgical things in the mass. 
Um, so the gallery organ versus the choir organ versus the choir. You'll hear some pretty large statements from the organ, from the gallery, and the choir organ is much more subtle. Um, I'm able to approximate all of this on this particular instrument because we have a sound library um, and one of those sounds is called choir ahs, A-A-A-H. We have over 600 digital samples, by the way, on this organ plus the pipes. So when I go to the bottom keyboard, you'll, see, you'll hear a sound that sounds very, very much like a choir. And if you play up and down a scale, you can hear where the basses sing. And then it goes into the tenors, tenor area, the timbre changes, and then the altos and the sopranos. It's really quite amazing. And then at the end, they all gather together at the end in a blindingly brilliant C-sharp major chord. The Curie by Louis Vierne from his first Mass. <laughs> Thank you. 
Our second piece is the Canon in D by Johann Pachelbel. He was a South German composer, organist, and teacher who lived from 1653 to 1706. And those of you who are historians will recall that Bach was born in 1685, so they were somewhat concurrent. Um, one of the interesting things about Pachelbel is he had several musical children. One of them, a son, Charles Theodore Pachelbel, came to the U.S. in 1733, one of the first European musicians to come to the New World. He lived in Boston for a time, and then he went to South Carolina and was the leading musician in that era, in that area, in that area of that era. The canon is, um, is done by three violins and continuo. You know what the violins are. The continuo is a harpsichord, keyboard instrument, or even a lute, and then an instrument to play the bass line, most likely a cello. So in the original score, each violin begins playing the score. The next violin comes in, I think, probably four measures later and plays the same thing, while the leading violin goes ahead and plays something different. Then the third violin comes in, and it becomes really interesting as the parts twine and intertwine together. This piece has become very popular. While I was in college, I believe, around the 19... Um, early 70s. This piece was played for the first time from a radio station in New York City. And the station was deluged with calls asking what this particular piece was. It's often used for weddings. The nice thing about this is it's based on four measure phrases so you can stop whenever things are ready to be stopped at a wedding. There's two ways of playing this, either as a prelude with a consistent volume pretty much or as a postlude where it gets louder. I'm playing it basically as a prelude on the string stops. The Canon in D by Johann Pachelbel.
Our third piece today is Ye Sweet Retreat by William Boyce. He lived from 1711 to 1779, so he was, he lived in England, so he was a contemporary of the great Handel. He was an organist, composer, a conductor, and became a doctor of music. And he was the master of the king's music, which was a very high-level musician indeed. In 1758, he had increasing deafness, so he really couldn't conduct anymore. So he spent the last 19 years of his life editing and arranging music. His, he was of such stature musically that he was buried under the dome of St. Paul's Cathedral. I don't know where this theme came from, but it is a beautiful melody. It was arranged for the organ by Virgil Fox, one of my heroes, um, who was assisted by Robert Hebel, one of his collaborators at the time, and probably came from a piano score um, arranged by Harold Bauer. This piece is quiet all the way through. It uses the amazing colors of this Rogers hybrid organ. It's constantly changing, and notice that I'm always pushing little buttons called generals or pistons, constantly changing solo voices and the colors just come and go. It's just a beautiful, beautiful piece. My organ, my first organ teacher gave me my first organ record and I would often play it on my first stereo while I was going to sleep. And when I played this piece last, I would always go to sleep very shortly after. You can go to sleep now if you want, or you can choose to stay awake and enjoy this beautiful Ye Sweet Retreat by William Boyce. <laughs> Thank you. 
Our last piece today is Tu es Petra, or Thou Art the Rock, by Henri Henry Mulet, M-U-L-E-T, 1878 to 1967. He was one of the later French composers that actually died during my lifetime. He was a French composer, organist, a harmonium player, and a cellist. He was an organ student of several of my heroes, Guimau, G-U-I-L-M-A-N-T, and the great Vidor. Thou art the rock, to S. Petra, is taken from Matthew 16, 18. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it, from the English Standard Version. Diane Bish depicts this work as a battle between good and evil. The first time I heard that, I thought, well, I'm not so sure, and the more I practice it, the more I agree, because if it's played the way it should be, with joyful abandon, it really is a battle. I'm not sure which, which is good and which is evil, but at the very, very end, there is a big F-sharp major chord that everything is summed up and the good has won. This is one of the best known French toccatas. Toccata means to touch. It's kind of a showpiece. It's usually vigorous and fast. It uses what we call the French chatter in the manuals. And when the camera zooms in, you can notice my hand are going right, left, left, right, right, left, left, right. And I change manuals and change themes. The melody goes from the pedals to the hands and back and forth. Um, this is a wonderful, wonderful piece. And this was the piece written on the record right after Ye Sweet Retreat. So if I wanted to go to sleep, I took the needle off before I got to this piece. If I didn't care about going to sleep, I'd listen to this, and I'd be wide awake for a long time after. Thou Art the Rock by Henri Mulet. Thank you. 